tell this story well. In Israel, they play this game. It's called broken telephone. And the way you play broken telephone, you put one person in one side and you put another person in another side. And each person whispered the story to the next person, to the next person, to the next person. You know, by the time you get to the last person, the story that you begin with have nothing to do with the original story. Friend, that is taking now 2,000 years. We have 2,000 years of broken telephone story about who is our Messiah. How much more a broken telephone the Lamba people have been playing? That you have been hearing the stories of the story of the story that ended up being a perversion of the truth. We must get back to the source of the story. And the source of the story is what is being entrusted to our Jewish people. So you, some of you ask me, do we really need to return to Judah? Yeah. Listen, the scripture says that the Jews are the holders of the oracles of God. Amen. So if you're not going to go to the source and you go to something else, you ended up with fake. Have you ever, have you ever bought this? Jeans, Levi's, right? But when I go to China and I buy Levi's, they have Levi's and they put S, Levi's. It's not the real thing. And when you put it on, it doesn't feel quite right. It doesn't feel like Levi's, but it's Levi's. The Satan has done such a good job taking the things that are of him and from him and changing just a little bit just enough let me give you an example do you know what the closest thing to judaism is the closest thing if i put something closest to judaism you know what it is catholicism catholicism literally mirror everything from judaism with small perversions if one wants to tell the real story, he must go to the source. We must return. And God says here to us, yes, I'm going to give you 50 days to learn the story. And only when you learn the story, you can become a testifier of this name. You know, to tell the story, to tell a story in Hebrew means to testify. The Torah give a commandment, one of the 613, 613 commandments actually say you are not to bear false testimony. I want to challenge today our people and say, are you, yo, do you want to give the real testimony of Yeshua? If you answer yes, it means that you must learn the real, real story. If anybody, Jew, Gentile, Lemba, Beta, it doesn't matter. If anybody rejects the authenticity of the origin of the story, he will end up with a broken telephone. Think about it. In the book of Acts, chapter 15, all the believers are Jewish. And then they come forward. And Gentiles start to come in and ask the question, what are we going to do about the Gentiles? It's impossible for a Gentile to follow a Jewish Messiah. 2,000 years later in Israel, if you say, I am a Jew, and you believe in Jesus and Yeshua, they will say, impossible. You cannot be a Jew and believe in Yeshua. How can it be that the church story has changed so much in 2,000 years? It is because the broken telephone effect now i want you to notice something that in this text here it says you are to tell your sons this is important you see we have this this mentality we want to go and testify to the world but the torah said no no the jewish way says no no before you go and testify for anybody else, make sure that you testify inside the house, in testify inside the family. Before you can take the role that God has for the Lambas to take, you need to make sure that your house is in order. Are you following what I'm saying? This is important. 
And here in the text he's saying, for this the Lord has, has done for me. What does for this mean? It means the word here, Ba'avul Zeh, for this. This is the purpose. This is the reason. This is the goal. The goal is to come into the ultimate knowledge that God is have for all humanity of knowing the story. You know, you want to know what God wants? He wants us to be storytellers. And as a matter of fact, Yeshua himself, in the book of Acts, said the believers, see Yeshua come down from heaven. And they say, Yeshua, this is so wonderful. You come to rapture us. You come to take us and listen to the response from the Messiah himself. He says, verse 6, have you come to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he answered to them, it is not for you to know the dates that the father set by his own authority. I want you to notice. He said, but you will receive power when the Ruach HaKodesh come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Judea, in Samaria, and all over the earth. In essence, what we need to pray for today is power. But notice the one word before power, or during with power, is the one word. How many of you want power today to act? Who wants power today to reenact and to reclaim his heritage? Come on, who wants power? I want power. But he's saying, but if you want to be power, you have to be witness. You see, the word witness in Hebrew is equivalent to the word storyteller. In essence, Yeshua says something like this. If you don't know the story, you cannot act with power. Only people who can give a true testimony and testify truly can be the one who work in power. So if we want power, if we want to see a revival, if we want to see the restoration, we first and foremost must learn the story today, here and now. I don't know about you, but that's I believe that this is my greatest calling in life. To come... And to tell you the story, the full version. And I hate to say it, but I will say it. Christianity does not have the full story, friends. Islam does not have the full story, friends. The context of Yeshua, understanding the full story of the salvation, has given and entrusted for the Jewish people. And he's challenging there and he said to them, you have... 50 days, 50 days, Israel, you have 50 days. And notice what happened. By the way, here in the, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, he said to them, start moving and spreading the, the story, right? What happened in Acts chapter 2? In Acts chapter 2, the Spirit of God is poor upon all flesh. You see, that's what we want. That's the picture of the redemption. We want the Spirit of God to pour upon all flesh. And that's what God is exactly going to use Africa for, as we already learned. The Spirit of God will pour upon all flesh because of the revival of Africa. But a real revival cannot occur if we don't know the real story. And what is God is going to do? He is bending people like Rabbi Yoash. He is paralyzing organizations like Higher Life Foundation. He is raising pastors who will tell the story the way it's needed to be told 2,000 years ago. And who's going to put in the middle of all of this? Our Jewish scattered African brothers. If the church is going to learn the story, let me tell you something. If the church, and the church will learn the story in Africa. They will learn it. Because the Spirit of God is steering Christians in this, in this continent. How much more our Jewish people should learn it? How much more you should be land challenged right now? As a matter of fact, you know, it says in the book of Micah, chapter 7, 
verse 15, he says that the last redemption will be greater than the first redemption. The Exodus, but it's really resemble it. Well, what does that mean? It means that Israel has to learn for 50 days. Before Shavuot come. We are right now in this period of this 50 days. Before the Spirit of God, as, the, uh, as it says in Joel. The Spirit of God will be poured upon all flesh. Have you ever thought about this? The goal is not the Torah. The goal is what happened on Mount Sinai. And what took place in Mount Sinai? There was a lightning and there were thunder, and the people saw the voices and they were scared. And God was looking there and says, where are you? Where are you? Why are you so scared? And the children of Israel said, no, no, we're too scared. We need to pray against spirit of fear to be broken upon our people. Remind me the story of King Ahaz. King Ahaz was the king of the kingdom of Judah. Isaiah saw the kingdom falling apart. And he came to him and he says to him, Ahaz, the kingdom is falling apart. Return to God. And he says, let me prove to you that really God wants you to be restored. Let me show you a sign. Let me show you a sign from above or from below. Ahaz looked at Isaiah and he told Isaiah, the scripture says, do not try the Lord your God. But you know really what was going on? It's not that Ahaz was a righteous king and he said, do not try the Lord your God. He was scared that he's going to see a sign. And because he's going to see a sign, he will actually have to change. My question to you today is simple. If you're going to see a sign who tell you you need to relearn this story from the beginning, which means that your life is going to be changed from the upside down, inside out, up and down, will you do it or will you be like Ahaz? We all can say hallelujah when we are here and we're excited. But will we be willing to change? Will we be able to execute on God's business plan? You see, you know when the Torah is kept brought? The Torah was given to Israel according to the book of Exodus chapter 19. Was given to Israel on the third day. Which day Yeshua resurrected from the dead? The third day. God wants to resurrect us. But it is our ability to learn the story that will allow us to do this. The question is, do we know the real story? Do we know our story? Not the Jewish story. It needs to become our story. And I'm talking to Lembas and non-Lembas. All of us here. Do we know the real story? And this is, is this real story become our story today. Sometimes we read the Bible and say, oh, this is about those Jews. This is the Jewish story. This is the Jewish feast. This is the Jewish festival. This is the Jewish Shabbat. Well, if you have a Jewish identity upon yourself, this becomes your story too. You see, Israel, as they receive the Torah, they hear the sound of the shofar. That's what the scripture says in, Levit in Exodus 19. They hear the sound of the ram horn. The question is, why do they hear the sound of the ram horn? And our rabbis explain to us, because the reason they are entering, they are entering to this new covenant with the God of Israel, they hear the ram horn, because God is actually entering him into renewed covenant. Which is the Abrahamic covenant. Remember Exodus, Genesis 22? What happened? The, the Abraham bring a sacrifice and, and instead of Isaac, he bring the, red, the, the, the ram horn. The ram horn ca got caught. It is a reenactment of the Abrahamic covenant. So what God is doing, he is walking them into a new covenant. And he is awarding them a new covenant because he is giving them a piece of the Torah for 50 days. What a merciful God he is. They're not ready to receive Torah yet. 
And I want to tell you, this is a prophetic word for the land. You are not ready to receive Torah yet. You're just not ready. But you know what you're ready to receive? One commandment from here. And one commandment from here. And one from here. And this is enough for God to take you to the next level, which is the level of revelation. Is it God good? He's never going to push you to the water. He's never going to put all of it all on you at once. He's going to give it precept upon precept and line upon line. Do you know that the Ten Commandments, each portion in the Hebrew Bible, in the five books of Moses, it's called in Hebrew parasha. It's called parasha. Now parasha is, is a topic. You know, there's a topic. For each portion, a Jews read every Shabbat in the synagogue, there is a meaning. Now when we get to the book of Exodus, chapter 19, or 18, that's when the Torah portion start for the Ten Commandments that are found in the book of Exodus, chapter 20. Now you would ex expect the parasha name to be what? The Ten Commandments, right? That's the main topic from Exodus chapter 18 to 22. You would expect it to be the Ten Commandments. But the Torah portion is actually called Itro, Jetro. Wait a second. Are you trying to tell me that Jethro, the father-in-law of Moses, is more important than the story and what happened with the Jewish people? It doesn't even make sense. Why is it that the Torah portion is called Jethro? Turn with me, if you have your Bibles, to Exodus chapter 18. Let's see why. This is significant and this is important. Exodus chapter 18. And I want you to notice the language. Now Jethro the priest now, why is Jethro is known by the name Jethro the priest, or in Hebrew, Itro the priest? Because Itro or Jethro was not Jewish, and he was not in the faith. Okay? And look at what it said. And now Jethro the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, Moses, there he, he, instead of saying he's the father-in-law of Moses, he said the priest. The Torah stretched for us that he is still in another fate. Heard of all that God has done for Moses and the Israel, Israel, uh, his people. Now, do you notice what the text tells us? He already heard the story. He heard what God has done. Wait a second. If you hear what God has done... You should receive it. But the Torah wants to tell us something important here. He heard what God has done, but he is still a priest in another faith. Are you following what I'm telling you? You can hear and hear and hear the story. But if the story you hear is not the real thing, it's going to go from one ear to another ear. I can come here. I can show you all the prophecies about the Lambas about Africa. If it does not fall upon the heart, and if God forbid I tell you a story that is not true, it's going to go from one ear to another. So please understand, that's what has happened. Jethro has heard the story, but he did not hear the rule to complete version of the story. The Hebrew word here for a story is almost like saying a fairy tale. It's almost like saying, and he heard the fairy tale. How the Lord has brought Israel out of Egypt. And Itro, Moses' father-in-law, took Moses' wife, Zipporah, after he sent it away. Look at verse 5. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his two sons and his wife to Moses in the wilderness where was camped the Mount of God. I want you to notice who is that who is coming to whom? 
Is it Moses who is coming to Jethro or is it Jethro who is coming to Moses? The text is telling us that it is Jethro who is reaching out to Moses. Moses is a representation of the Jewish people. Jethro is the representation of everybody outside the Jewish people. It is your job to seek the Moseses. It is your job, as it says in Zechariah 23, to grab the robe of the Jew. You know, it says in Zechariah 23, 10 men from the nation will grab the hold of the Jew. But it doesn't say they will do this. It says they will grab. They will grab and don't let war go. That's the Hebrew word. They will grab in power. Notice that Chetro is going to Moses. This is very, very important. And he sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law, Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons with her. So he's coming to him. Then Moses, and I want you to see this, and what Moses did. Moses did not stay on the mountain of God. Remember, Moses was on the mountain, Mount Horeb. They're about to receive the Ten Commandments. But what did it say that Moses did? Moses did not say, mm, I'm just going to wait for him to show up. Hallelujah that he did not wait. What did Moses did? Then Moses went out to, to his father-in-law, you know. The word there to went out literally means hastened out. He ran and he seeked him. He actually were going to seek him. So he didn't wait back. You remember in Genesis 18, Abraham is seeing the three angels. What does angel Abraham do? He get up and he ran to them. The text says he ran and then he tell his wife, Harry. And then he said to her, quickly. And then he said, Harry, quickly, prepare the meal. There is a lesson here. There is, there is an attitude here and I hope you catch it in the text. He is hastening. Moses is not waiting to come. This is why I didn't wait for you to come. I am coming to you. If I wait for you to come, you may be never coming. We need to run and meet each other in the middle. This is significant. The problem is some of us have pride and ignorance and arrogance and say, we don't want to run. Let them come to us. That's pride, friends. Because you remember what we established earlier today? The nation of Israel need Africa. And Africa need the nation of Israel. So we better figure out how to run to each other. I am telling you, the highway that is built, it's a mistake to think that the highway is going to be built from Africa to Israel. The, uh, the highway is also built from Israel to Africa. The highway is being built both ways. Are you following what I'm saying to you? Both sides have to build it. And look at the next verse. This is the verse I wanted to get to. Then Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord has done to Pharaoh in, uh, and to the Egyptians. For Israel's sake, all the hardship had befallen them on the journey and how the Lord has delivered them. Can we stop there and ask the question, wait a second, haven't we read in verse 1 that Jethro already heard the story? Moses already sent the story. How come Moses take the time to tell him the story one more time? The Hebrew word there to tell the story, when he say, and Moses told the story, is the Hebrew word sipu. The word sipu. He's not, hey, let me tell you a story I heard from somebody here. He's telling him his personal account. You want to know why? Because the story of redemption is not the story of a, a redemption of 600,000 Jews. Moses is telling him, I was redeemed. Moses is telling him the story from his own person, with his own perspective. It is authentic because it's something that he experienced. It is the authentic story. It is the real thing. Now the interesting thing, if you take this Hebrew word, sipu, it's all the numerical value in Hebrew. 
sipu of 441 which is equivalent to in Hebrew to the word and this is the Messiah son of David you want to know what story was told at this moment to Jethro it was the story of the Messiah how God delivered us in the most intimate and in most personal in the most powerful way and I want you to notice what happened here in the story to the next verse to Jethro and Itro rejoiced over all the goodness which the Lord which the Lord Adonai had done to Israel notice the language in delivering them from the hand of the Egyptian. Are you following what I'm telling you? Jethro was converted. Jethro is going to the conversion. You know to know, you want to know why Israel received the Torah only after the conversion of Jethro? Because God wanted to test it Moses and make sure that Moses knew the story. Salvation will not come until the story is told correctly in completion and in perfection. Are you hearing what I say here today? Hallelujah. You understand why we must get it right? And a matter of fact, I love the next verse. Remember in verse 1, Jethro, he's called Jethro the idol worshiper. Jethro the priest. But look at verse 10. And Jethro said, Baruch, Baruch Adonai, may Adonai will be blessed who delivered you from the hand of the Egyptian, from the hand of Pharaoh, and who delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. You notice what Itro is doing? He's standing and he's giving thanks and honor to the mighty one of israel and how did he get to the point that he is giving the honor and glory to the mighty one of israel it is simple he get to this point because he heard the real gospel he heard the real truth you know we can give our gospel to the world we don't need to bring a gospel to the world we need to bring the jewish gospel to the world the real jewish gospel needs to go out are you following with me? Us just received the gospel from the Christian for 2,000 years. What kind of good news did it brought us? Please don't become a Christian. Stay with the Jewishness of the gospel. Please. Are you following what I'm telling you here today? Listen to the next verse. Now I know, Rosivo, now I have the knowledge. You want to know what the real story is telling you? When you tell the real story, you get the real Rosivo, the real knowledge. He heard the real story and then say, now I know. He didn't say, I feel by the Holy Spirit. No, he just said that. That's nonsense. Judaism is not based on feeling. It's not based on emotion. Judaism is based on knowledge. And you need to know the story. His conversion process is complete. Now I know Adonai, the Lord, is greater than any other gods. Indeed, it was proven when they dealt proudly against the people. Excuse me, how was it proven? You see, when Moses stood up and his testimony was so profound, it was not like before in verse 1 when he heard a story. You can say to anybody, we are the Lamba, we are the Jews. whoopie do. Nobody going to care and nobody's going to believe you. 
But when you say, we are the Lambas, we are Jews, we are in Kenya, we have the Jewish ancestry, and here is what we have to prove. Look at how God changed us. Look at what God has done. Look at how God transformed us. Look at what God does in us, with us, and through us. Then everything changes. Nobody can refute an evidence. You know what they say in America? The proof is in the pudding. You can say anything talking is cheap. Show me the money. Show me the evidence. And Moses is standing here saying, I can tell you about God. But let me show you. I brought me 600,000 of my closest friends and we defeated the Egyptian. What do you have to say about this Jethro? What is, can your God do that? No. You see, this is what God is going to do. That is why we must. And by the way, look at this. Then Jethro, Jethro actually going crazy at this point. Now you know why the Torah portion called Jethro. It is calling Jethro because it's a model for the relationship between Jews and non-Jews. How we must meet each other. So we brought, brought, bring them in. This is, this is classic, guys. But Jethro does not stop there. Look what it says. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. By, by the way, notice he's not called high priest anymore. Why? Because God changed him. Took a burnt offering and sacrifices for Adonai. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat a meal with Moses. Hallelujah! Not only that they make sacrifices, now Aaron comes and is joining it as the high priest. Do you understand what is happening here? The adoption of Jethro to the house of Israel. We believe in adoption. Hallelujah. Let me say it again. The Jewish people believe in adoption. And it's true to all of you. We love to adopt children. And we love to adopt our own children who have been astray for a long time. The question today, do you want to be adopted? You see, maybe one day I will adopt a few kids from Zimbabwe. And I'll bring them. Maybe I will adopt a few kids from the Lambas. And you know what I'll do if I'll adopt a few kids from the Lambas? I will bring them on and I will teach them from the very first day. Here is the way we do things. And it will be the exact same way as I would do my natural kids. And this is what God wants right now. He wants the Jewish people to be an adoption agency. My question to all of you. Do you want to be adopted? Because the second you come to my family, you have no more pork chops, no more anything like this. You have to be kosher. You have to be just like everybody else in my house. And you need to be adopted. But guess what? If you come to my house and you don't understand the rules, I'm going to give you grace. And that's what God done for 50 days. He said, I'm going to give you grace. You're not going to get the rules of the house right, well, right away. You don't understand the rules of the house of Israel because you've been away from the house of Israel. But I'm going to teach you and I'm going to show you. And it is your ability to understand and your ability to get the story right that will bring the ultimate salvation. Let me connect the dot for you from the first message. The first message we clearly saw in the scripture that the African brothers are going to become the living sacrifice of the entire house of Israel. Well, guess what? What does it mean to be a living sacrifice? They are going to return to Zion and then going to come to the entire house of Israel. And they're going to stand and they say, look at what God has done. With us, through us, and it's done it by telling the story. In Hebrew, what the story? Equivalent to the name, Messiah, son of David. Please, Lembas, Bet Israel, Ebus, don't tell Zion the wrong story. Or even worse, don't tell story at all. It's the worst tragic thing you can do. Africa have a story to tell to Zion. The prophet says in Isaiah 50, 
two, let's go there. In conclusion, I don't understand what kind of Bible this is. This is not a Jewish Bible. The order of the books is all crazy. Get Jewish Bibles. We need to help you get some Jewish Bibles. 52. How lovely are the mountains of the one, of the feet of the one who bring good news. He bringing good story. He bringing the real story. I don't want telephone, broken telephone. And please, Lambas, don't tell me excuses. I don't know the story because my history has been lost. Look what happened with Jethro. He didn't end the story. He heard the story and he changed. On an instant. You can change in an instant. God changed people in the Bible in an instant. He can change you in an instant. He will change you in an instant. Who announce peace and bring good news of happiness. Listen, you much when lift your voice and shout joyfully. He is announced very, very salvation. And here is what he's announced. He say to Zion, you want to know what you're going to say to Zion? Here is the word that Africa will tell Zion. When this freeway is being built, your God is king. You are going to be restored to our people, and you're going to look at Zion and say, No, we, we didn't do it. We didn't get the receiver, we didn't get the knowledge. Your God did it. And by the way, his name is Yeshua. Can you imagine what's going to happen in, in Zion? I'm excited. Anybody excited? Mark, are you excited? Pastor Matt, are you excited? I'm excited. God has given you a great commission of to become the great storyteller. And it is not about what you know. It is about who you know. Jethro knew nothing. But he had the authentic experience with the most authentic Jew of this time, Moses. You know, if you take the word Moshe, Moses, and you say, Moshe, Chai, Moses is alive, is equivalent to the number 363, which is the word Hamashiach, the Messiah. You have the most important one already here for you. His name is Yeshua. So the very first thing I say you do, you put Yeshua name. Not Jesus, not Jesus. You put Yeshua name upon your lips. He has the answer. He is the ultimate. Remember I told you about my friend Solomon who used to tell me the story? You have somebody greater than Solomon. You have Yeshua. And he is going to teach you the story. And then he's going to send reinforcement. He's going to send the Jewish people. Moses is a picture of Yeshua. And he's also a picture of the Jewish people. They are going to come and they're going to teach you and you're going to learn. But we have to meet in the middle and we have then to renounce all things. People ask me, going back to the question earlier, go, is it okay to hold on to my culture, to my ancestry? No, it's not okay. If you are part of the house of Israel, look what he did. He said, no, let's go do it the Jewish way. Jethro said, forget, uh -uh, I'm done being the high priest of Midian. Forget that. Don't mix that. It says on the Samaritans, they say they knew the God of Israel while they worship other gods. Don't do that. Don't mix Judaism with other things. Especially here in Africa. Sorry, you think you are an ancient? We are more ancient. We've been holding the covenant from the beginning. Leave the nonsense behind. Leave our other covenant. You know what he did? Jethro did? He broke the covenant. He broke all these other covenants and he made a new covenant. What I guess I'm suggesting to you today, it is time for you to enter a new covenant with the God of Israel. A new covenant with the God of Israel and with the Jewish people. There is no way you can enter a new covenant with the God of Israel if you're not entering a covenant with every Jew in the world. Please understand that. And that's what Jethro did. And that's the reason he saw him 
Guess what? He's seeing him, and Aaron came. Aaron is the high priest. He says, oh, I'm going to sit down and eat with you. Can you imagine the abomination? If Aaron would eat something with somebody who is unevenly yoked, it's, it's not heard of. But you know, he made him clean. That's why when, when we read the story of Peter and Cornelius, when Peter and Cornelius are sitting and eating together, please understand for a Jew to eat with a non-Jew. Or a non it's unheard of. Hallelujah. Anybody that knows the story of Yeshua is my brother and he's my sister and he's welcome on my Shabbat table. But don't come to Shabbat table and tell me another story. I want to hear Yeshua. I want to prophesy of Yeshua. I want to speak about Yeshua. And I want to tell the world about Yeshua. Africa need to be heard about Yeshua. But God, help us to tell the story. The real authentic story. We also saw earlier today that the word Zimbabwe means the house of stones. Well, what did the prophet say? Remove the stones. Remo he's going to remove those stones and he's going to build a new house. But in this new house is going to happen with a new story, friend. A new story. And this is going to be a different story. Because in this story, you're not going to say, look at what we have been and what we have lost. Forget it. Forget. I don't want you to lament about what you have lost. Start focusing on what is ahead and what is in the future. Focus on the ex execution of the roadmap now. Not what you have lost, but what you are gaining right now. Thank you, Lord. I bless the name of Yeshua. He is the great storyteller. And I just speak in the name of Yeshua, just as it says in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, when Yeshua looked upon Peter. And he said to you, Peter, blessed are you, Peter. Nobody told you this story. Heavens told you this story. I'm telling you, it starts with your desire. To tell it to your children. To tell it among yourself. You need to be obsessed with returning to your... That need to become your center of your existence. They're gaining back the knowledge. Gaining back the story. That need to become your, your essence. And not to prove that you're 70% Jewish or 50% Jewish or 30 That's not how you're going to gain it back. You're gaining it back by gaining back the story. May God have blessing upon you. May God help us. May God help all of Israel. Because if you don't get this story, as we saw earlier, Israel will not complete the story. Please understand the burden and the weight upon your shoulder. This is a burden and a weight. And if you are walking out of here today with burden and weight, I'm praying that the Lord will speak to you and reveal himself and put this burden and weight upon you. When I was 13 years old, like every Jewish boy, and I went to my bar mitzvah, they asked me only one question. And this is the last question I'm going to ask you today. I look at the rabbi's face, and he said to me, Son, are you willing to take upon yourself the burden of the kingdom of God? I'm asking all of us this question. Are we willing to take upon ourselves the burden of the story of the kingdom and the real king so it will be established again? That's it. God bless you. Thank you very much.